Thanks for being with me today. You know, we're in a dramatic time in our world, in our United States history. And as I'm taping this show, there's no conclusion about who's going to be the next president of the United States. And we don't know for sure exactly what the Senate's going to be like, but we think the GOP is going to control it. Today, I'm going to talk about something else, which is the need for a better plan to fight climate change than what the Democrats are proposing, which is so harmful to American society and will result in us having unreliable power where I won't be able to do things like tape this TV show with certainty because our electric grid could get so unreliable with a massive reliance on photovoltaic technology as it exists today, which is subject to rapid falls and rises in power as clouds come across the sun. Today's a partly cloudy day, kind of hazy, and solar output would be down and fluctuate heavily, and it would be a disaster if we didn't have natural gas power plants to back it up in an instant. But even having a natural gas power plant ready to go doesn't help you in the case of a disastrous fall in electrical output coming in near instance as the sun goes behind a cloud covering the solar farm, shading it for an undetermined period of time, and then the power comes surging back up. The grid's all about trying to keep everything in balance. Life is about a balance. There has to be power coming in and power going out. The grid can't store power. There's a thought that, oh, we can have batteries to store all this power. But friends, there's just not enough raw materials to make enough batteries to last for any length of time. People brag about huge battery packs that are being built that can power a city, but they then they quickly add it'll only power the city for six hours. So a cloudy day runs the battery down right quick and then you don't have any power. Hardly a solution. There's some better ways to think about things and we need to think distinctively and out of the box. You may not realize it, but I'm a creative guy and an inventor by avocation. I have a bunch of patents and a bunch of ideas to make the world a better place. You can go to the Get Real Alliance and go to links on that website and get directed to some of the ideas that I'm working on that can really make power better. But I've got some ideas to make both wind and solar really reliable sources of power with built-in backup so that when the wind doesn't blow, we've still got power. And when the sun doesn't shine, we've still got power. If the sun goes behind a cloud, the solar array can keep making power with our new power design. It's a radical shift. It involves not depending on the sun as the only source of electricity, but the sun as part of a system that uses natural gas to back up the sun and provide power when the sun doesn't shine adequately in a very harmonious way to maximize the use of solar. So I'm all for using renewables. I'm all for conserving fossil fuels as much as possible because friends, they are finite. They're not infinite. And if we deplete them rapidly, we will be out of it in the future for posterity. We've got to think about our kids. We've got to think about our grandkids. And we need to be as efficient as possible and do things that are sustainable and really long lasting and reliable. So there's a lot we can do, but friends, it isn't sometimes the cheapest way. You know, people talk about how cheap solar has gotten, but nobody talks about the fact that the sun generates power in a bell curve coming from near zero in the morning up to a peak in the middle of the day and then rapidly falling back off in just a few hours to a low level in the late afternoon. We all know this, being out in the sun, it's hot as hell in the middle of the day to sit out in the sun or sunbathe. Much cooler to be outside in the morning or the late evening. It's just so impossible to think that somehow people want to delude themselves into thinking that the sun is this constant power source 
for every minute of the day that's not dark because that's just not the way life is. So we need to take this very variable power and fill in the valleys and harness the peaks because the sad fact is the grid can't store power. There's not going to be enough batteries possibly made to store all this excess power and having excess power for just an hour or two a day doesn't even charge a battery pack to last for a couple of hours. So not to mention days and uh, the excess capacity that would need to be installed to charge all the batteries to last for a day or more with no sun is just an absolutely huge amount of extra solar capacity that has to be put in. And man is foolish not wanting to be prepared for outages, not wanting to have surplus capacity. You know, it's just like right now in this country, we're lucky that our hospitals haven't cut back as much as the government run hospitals in countries like Britain, where there's very few intensive care beds for the population. And they're very worried about having to turn people away from hospitals because they don't have extra bed capacity. We have some extra bed capacity here in this country, but not near as much as we need if this pandemic really took off in a bad way or if the next one takes off in a bad way. You don't hear the politicians talking about a need for a national reserve, intensive care beds, extra nurses that can be dispatched into duty. We're living just in time, friends. And just in time means that when something disrupts that chain, it goes down to a bad place real quick. So we need surplus power. We need reliable power. We don't need to be counting on this wildly fluctuating power or wind power that fluctuates as the wind ebbs and flows because the wind is not a steady laminar flow across the land. It eddies and swirls and creates all sorts of uncertainties that lower the power quality produced by the windmill. Driving an electric generator directly from the wind is a recipe to have unreliable power at a low level that you can't count on. And that's what people are pushing us to do. They're pushing us to build these harmful, huge horizontal axis turbines where the blades spin at the tips at hundreds of miles an hour, shredding any flying animal, bat or wonderful hawks or eagles, just literally blowing them to pieces. Imagine getting a, an animal being hit by something going two or 300 miles an hour. The impact is just catastrophic. Just boom, blow it to pieces, scattering it in the wind with the fragments being dispersed widely and hard to track down. This is what we're doing with these horizontal axis wind turbines. We need to think long and hard about our natural system and not destroying it, producing these mega wind turbines of uncertain lifespan that are pushing the limits of engineering, almost assured to not have long, long lives. In terms of the people who are building these things, they're making the money building the installation and they don't care about the long term. What is happening, friends, is that the investment tax credits that electric utilities get run out after 10 years of installation time. And what's happening is these wind turbines are not really profitable to operate, especially as they get older and start having maintenance issues. So they're literally tearing down usable wind turbines and land filling the blades at a big expense because the wind turbines are no longer economic when they lose that vital tax credit that can be sold for good revenue. So there is a lot of deception and a lot of wrongdoing and evil thought. Greed is taken in place instead of thinking about providing a lasting source of power that will last for 30 or 40 years. Many of these wind turbines are being torn down at 10 years of age, not even the 20 that people talk about. Friends, 20 years isn't very long. You know, I've seen 20 years go by 
in a flash. It seems like it was just a few years ago that my kids were born and here they are growing up and on in their lives. Time flies by, time waits for no man and to build things that are only gonna last for a few decades at most is foolhardy because what we need is super long lasting power systems that will be there through our lifetime building something that lasts for 30 or 40 or 50 years or even better something like a hydroelectric dam that might last a hundred or more years look at how great the hoover dam is go to the getrealalliance.org sign up for our newsletter give us a donation if you like my message on this show if you like the idea that we need a positive solution to climate change we're going to post a definitive paper on my carbon sequestration program that can make America carbon negative while we still use oil and gas. And friends, we can do it. We spelled out how to do it. It takes care of the poor. It takes care of the coal miners. It shifts away from coal dramatically towards clean natural gas and renewables as we can. We can make a real difference in the world, but we need your help. We need your support. We need you to sign up. We need you to share us on social media. It's all about building numbers, building a consensus, building a huge group of people advocating for positive change so that we can make a difference. I need your help. I've got some great ideas to solve the world's problems. I've got a way to make solar and wind super reliable and backed up and something you can count on just like you can on your electricity today. We can do it, friends. It's gonna cost a little extra, but it's gonna make more power, more power when we need power, which is what we really need. But to do that, we're gonna to have to use some natural gas along with that wind and solar. We're not gonna be able to do it with the wind and the sun alone. I'm eager to share this information. I'm eager to grow. But like everybody in the world, there's a lot of demands on my cash. And I need your support to help fund this TV show, to help fund our outreach. We need to be doing online marketing, bringing more viewers into our website. We can do that with online marketing very affordably. 30 cents per click through to our site. That means 30 cents to get somebody to read our page but it takes the money. So we need donations from you to fund that work. We've got a tumultuous time in this country with the divided government, with the divided populace, and we need to come together behind things we can all believe in. And believing in restoring the soil to health, believing in better food, better profits for people growing food, and to be sustainable, to not be eroding 10 million tons of soil a day, losing it forever, not growing the desert by a huge amount every day, a million acres a year going to desert. We need to turn that around and have a million acres going back to grassland, going back to productive soil, soil that's sequestering carbon, supporting soil life, you know, soil life outnumbers life on top of the land by 10 to one. There is so much life in healthy soil, but there's so much soil in the world that's been degraded and debased to where it can't support soil life. Not even microbes can live in some of this sterile soil as it trends to desert. So we need to do things about it and we can and will make a real difference with your support, share this video with people. If you can't communicate the issues I bring forward, steer them to the websites, get them to look at the content and say, oh, okay, I understand. So the solution is to not have the sun directly coupled to the electric grid with no buffer in between the sun and the power that comes out of your wall. We need to have a buffer, and that buffer can be a new power system that decouples the immediate solar output from what comes out of the electric power coming out of the grid. And we can do that with the system we're developing. 
We're going to be able to share a lot more about it going forward. We're initially just doing some research and getting ready to file patents. Once we have patents filed, we'll be able to share it aggressively. There'll be articles on the GetRealAlliance.org that you can go to. Please check out the articles. I have a great article on the GetRealAlliance.org in the blog about actual solar output in Dallas, Texas with graphs that show what the sun is actually doing on given weeks, representative weeks picked out of a year of data that we collected minute by minute of what the sun is actually doing. And friends, it is shocking. It is shocking. You know, normally the sun starts out low in the morning and then rises gradually up to a peak at midday when the sun's the brightest and strongest. And then it starts falling in the afternoon and falls quicker and quicker as the day goes on down to a low level in the afternoon. The sun is a very fluctuating curve of power, but it gets worse than that, friends, because every time a cloud comes over, the power drops from five or 600 watts per square meter of surface area down to maybe 100. So an 80% fall in a matter of a minute as a cloud comes over and shades the sensor or the solar array. So we have real problems dealing with reliability and friends, we need a power system that stabilizes that out. And we've got a solution to it and we're excited about it and eager to share it once we have it protected where we're not gonna give it away without an opportunity to get any compensation for my ideas. But we can do it and we can do it with your help. We need your financial support. I will tell you that things are tight right now and I need support, I need help, and you can make a real difference at the Get Real Alliance by going to our online giving, putting your information in and making a donation of any size whether it's $5, $10, $20, or $100, or even 1000 it's all welcome and will really inspire us to do greater things and make things happen. We're currently running on borrowed money, and friends, we're counting on people stepping up and helping us to make this thing into a huge cause that has a million followers or 10 million followers so we can really have an influence on the political debate because going to a carbon sequestration fund that is funded with an affordable tax on carbon emissions is going to be somewhat unpopular because nobody likes to pay more for their gas. Nobody wants their electric bill to go up a little bit. Nobody wants to pay extra to make a difference. But friends, we need to save the soil. We need to soak up the excess carbon dioxide and put it back in the soil, put it into plants. We need to restore forest to health. We've all seen this year the tragedy of the woods of the West burning in huge amounts, releasing hundreds of millions of tons of carbon dioxide back into the air, ashes and soot and pollution damaging the environment horribly. We need to restore the forest to health. And friends, we advocate that in our program that will be posted on the getrealalliance.org real soon. So keep watching our site. I checked it this morning and my webmaster hadn't posted the article. I just sent it to him last night. But basically, we can do it by restoring agriculture to health and by remineralizing the earth. It can be done. And then we can make sensible choices about our renewable energy to pick things that are gonna really provide lasting continuous power instead of wild fluctuations where a cloudy day means blackouts and no power, really unbelievable disaster awaits if we recklessly go to making intermittent power sources our primary reliable, non-reliable source of power so that we lose the joy of having reliable electricity which has made American life so great. So friends, think long and hard about it. Join us, share us, spread the word. You know, not near enough people watch my videos. I'm a preacher by heart, an advocate, 
and an inventor, and I love for people to hear my viewpoint about solutions to problems that can really take over and make the world a better place if we adopt them. Frankly, friends, we live in an irrational time where people make ridiculous assumptions that we can spend money we don't have, that we can live on debt alone for large periods of time. Our country is making horrible decisions. Friends, we need to live responsibly. We don't need to leave future generations, even us in the future, with huge debts that we don't have an ability to service. People are investing in government debt instead of productive income producing assets. And so many companies today operate in a almost zero profit mode. You have large companies like Uber losing money or they give millions of people rides in cars because they don't charge enough money out of a predatory process of trying to compete with their competitor Lyft and trying to put taxi cabs out of business. You know, Uber and Lyft have a great idea. The cell phone dispatch ride is a noble idea, but it's evil to operate a business at a loss trying to put your competition out of business. The Christian way to do things is to charge a fair price for your product so that you make money and so you can pay your workers well, you can pay your investors well. It all takes working together. We have to think about everybody. We have to be holistic. And that's where we're not headed with the democratic climate proposals that focus strictly on cutting emissions instead of increasing carbon sequestration, which is absolutely vital to environmental health. Because friends, a healthy environment, healthy growing conditions will cause the plants to soak up all the excess carbon dioxide they can. A healthy growing crop will soak up so much carbon dioxide that the CO2 level by the plant drops to almost zero. Plants are hungry for carbon dioxide, but the only reason they don't soak it up is if they're short on other nutrients and our demineralized improperly fertilized soils are deficient in many nutrients so the plants aren't as healthy and vital as they could be and they don't perform as well as they could. And with improper fertilization using water soluble chemical fertilizers, you produce an unhealthy plant that attracts parasites and bugs and also creates unhealthy food coming out of the plant. So we've got to think long and hard about what we're doing. And the truth is the GetRealAlliance.org climate sequestration program solves the climate issue, makes America carbon negative at an affordable price that's only a few percent of what people advocate with these crazy plans like the Green New Deal that would destroy your reliable electric power and lead you in a third world nation kind of reliability of power where you don't know when you're going to have power, when your appliances are going to be able to run. There's a dark world out there, friends, and we need your support. We need your support strongly to get online, to sign up for the newsletter, to sign up for social media, join us, follow us, spread us, and donate. It takes money to do the job. We need lots of dollars, and without your support, we will be hopeless. Now, you can say, well, David, you haven't talked as much about loving your neighbor today as you usually do. You're right, because this issue about how we're going to provide the essentials of life, I really wanted to devote this show primarily to that, but that theme resonates through everything. Taking care of the environment, taking care of posterity is all about loving your neighbor. So that's really always there. But today we've talked about wind and solar. I've got some exciting new ideas on how to make wind and solar totally reliable and able to provide power whenever people need it. And the backup system will provide power at night and when the wind doesn't blow. So we can make a difference, friends, and your support can really help us carry our word out there and spread the vital news. We're making progress, trying to make a difference in the world, 
and you can too by spreading the word, saying to people, go to Insights with David, go to GetRealLines.org, join us. We need more Instagram followers. It's crucial. We need numbers, friends. Numbers sell politicians. If somebody looks right now and says, oh, you just got 1,000 or 2,000 followers, that's nothing. We need a million. We need you to spread the word, and you can do it. If you post us on Facebook, if you post us on your social media and say, here's a guy that's got a positive solution to the climate crisis that doesn't wreck our lives, that doesn't take away our cars, that doesn't require unrealistic ideas such as increasing electrical demand with a bunch of electric cars, while we turn the grid into an unreliable, fickle creature where the power goes up and down, up and down, up and down all day long. What do you do if you're charging your electric vehicle and there's a brownout and you're stuck at the charging station with no power coming in to charge your car? I'll tell you what's going to happen. The grid is going to start regulating your power use and things like electric car chargers are going to be turned off when the sun goes behind a cloud. Your dishwasher or your washing machine or your dryer isn't going to run unless there's extra power, unless there's enough power to run it. They're going to shut down things in your house. That's what's headed towards us. Utilities are perfectly happy to do all kinds of crazy things to keep electric coming in. As long as they can get some revenue, what power they make, it's all there. So friends, join us online, support us, do what you can to spread the word. Be sure to sign up so you get notification when my book comes out. We're in the process of fortifying it and rewriting it to make it stronger so that we can really argue strong with these people who think the only way we can make any dent in the climate problem is by destroying the American way of life and wrecking our reliable electricity and you know, sending everybody to electric cars when most people have no way to charge an electric car because they park their car out on the street. Friends, we live in a tough world. We need to share love. We need to make love a principal goal. And being respectful and rational is the best way to love other people by not taking crazy positions and not assuming that Miraculous things can happen, making power. We need reliable power. Go to Get Real Alliance and check out the positive news that's going to be coming in the near future about ways to make wind and solar truly power we can count on. It's been a blessing to be with you, and may the peace that passes understanding be with you. And let's do great things to make the world a better place. That's all I have today. Take care. God bless you.